What's up, you guys? Today, we're going to do a sort of walkthrough of the Patcher plugin within FL Studio. FL Studio's Patcher plugin is probably one of its most powerful plugins because it's pretty much all the FL Studio plugins in one. <laughs> With many useful presets for multiple different uses, the possibilities are endless. So to show this and take a look at it, let's jump on in. Please like and subscribe. So we'll start by loading an instance of Patcher. And for this video, I'm going to show all the controls as we walk through and create an automated base synth that will have specific controls that we will be able to change on our surface viewer here. To give a quick example, we can create an interface like this and make our own sound or synth in the background here. Now we will not go this complex or complicated, but we will go just complex enough to show you everything I think you need to know within the Patcher plugin. So we'll start with our drop down here and we will choose Add Plugin and add an instance of SimSynth. So we just added a SimSynth here. I can double click it to view it. And I want you to notice we are creating a generator plugin here, which is an instrument, but you can also load up Patcher onto your effects chain and use it to do creative effects controls, where you'll see a lot more presets than we have for our instrument generator version. Now, if we head over to customizing our bass, we'll add a square at the top for extra harmonics, a saw in the middle because we can, and sub bass at the bottom because, well, we're making a bass. Now that we've done that, the sound we have, is that right there. Now, not only can we open instruments, we can open effects as well. So let's open two effects. We're going to open a wave shaper and an EQ. So now that I have my EQ and wave shaper loaded, I wanna run this into the EQ. You can do that by simply clicking and dragging. And then to detach it, we can just come over here and we can take it off. Now, if I open this up, and you're following along with me, something we want to do is we want to add a filter and we want to add a filter with some resonance. So we'll do a low pass. We'll add some, a resonant peak. Now, in order for us to hear this, we are not actually outputting out of the output. So what we can do is just for now, we'll run it through the wave shaper and out of the output. And we'll sharpen this up. And the sound that we just got, the little wobble, is what we want. That's the feeling we're looking for. Now that we've got an EQ with some resonance, we'll go and move this down to a lower place where we'll let it rest. Then we'll come into our wave shaper here and we will distort our sound. And the reason we're distorting our sound is to add back some higher end information and make it just sound very, very aggressive. So I want odd harmonics because I want something warm. So instead of doing asymmetrical, which is this setting on the bottom, I will do it symmetrical. Asymmetrical means you can edit the bottom and top part of the wave which creates even harmonics when these things aren't symmetric. And those even harmonics create a different tone that I am not looking for. Our wave shaper, if you don't know, we have input and output. So our input volume is to about right where that line hit. And I can change this so that our output will be different. With our input volume resting there, I want to distort anything above that. So I'm going to bring this down. And then if I cut this off, we're going to get some hard clipping happening for anything above that. When I click this again, you'll notice it gets a little nasty. Now, I don't know if I want it to happen that hard, so we'll curve it like an S. And 
and I kind of like that. Now, it has these little jumps up. And when it jumps up, I think what I want to do is invert this. Cool. So we've got a little bit of grit going on there. Now I can change the mix. I can either do none or I can turn it up. So we will just add that grit back in until we like it. I think I like it right about there. So now that we've got that, we're getting somewhere. You've learned how to route things. We can add effects. We can use instruments. I could even add in multiple synths if I wanted to. But now let's add some automation and use a filter technique that you often see in synths like Serum, Massive, and more. To do this, we're going to automate this filter that was that we were wobbling before. In order to automate this, we will have to click the parameter in question, and then we're going to want to click Activate. Now I want you to notice, we now have another input for our fru fruity parametric EQ. This input is an input that we can use to control filter seven. Now the first thing that we'll need in order to create this automation is an input for it to read. In order to do this, we'll actually create another sim synth. Now that we have this, I want to disconnect that and we're going to set this sim synth so that all we get is a quick pluck. Something like this. Now that we have that, we'll need a way to customize and control it for the filter. If you notice, I cannot link that to the red knob, but that's okay because we have a tool for this. To do this, we'll add a peak controller. We can disconnect this from the master out, connect it to the peak controller. Opening our peak controller, we can see the volume that we're going to use as an envelope to control number seven. Now, here's an issue. This right here still won't hook up. Why is that? Well, that is because this is an audio output. We do not want that. So, how do we add that? Well, if we right click any plugin or anything that's available to us, we'll get some options. And one of those options is inputs and outputs. So if we choose output, we can go controller and we can choose our peak, which is what we're going to use as an output. Now this peak data here can be connected to our EQ specifically our number seven. Now, an issue you'll notice is this is going to go back and rest down at the bottom. To fix this, we can open up our peak controller and we can turn the base of the peak controller up. We'll hook our audio back up and we can take a listen as we move it. And I want it to end about right there. I like the way that sounds. Great. So that's really cool. Now that we have that there, let's create a knob that can actually turn this on or off or change this filter type. I want a customizable synthesizer where I can choose between these two. In order to do this, we're going to right click our filter type on the top right, not these dots, but the actual icon, and we're going to go activate. We now have another red dot. Now, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to double click our surface control here. We're going to click add. We're going to add a knob. We'll just do default, keep it simple. Now, we want to make sure that we have a click 
each on this knob per filter type that's available to us. If we'll see right now, it's pretty fluid. There's a lot of points in which this can stop, but we only want to give this a couple options. So let's go back to map. We can open our EQ here, and let's see how many filter types we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight of them. So now we know that on our surface control here, this knob needs eight points to lock to. So if I click this button, I can come here, right click this, properties, I can go to maximum value, and we want to set our maximum value to seven. And here's the reason why is because zero is counted as a value. So if you count zero up to seven, then you get eight, because zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's eight. Now, if we unclick this and check, we'll see that it only snaps two points. It goes completely up, completely down. Well, what's the deal? The deal is, the speed in which it moves between points hasn't changed. Before, there was a couple thousand points. A few thousand. I don't even really remember. And it was gliding between those quite drastically. We turned that to eight. So we need to change our speed. So if we go properties, we go move speed. We can change this to a one. Now if we check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way across there, we can now map that button with this red one here, see it's knob, we can map that to our filter type. And now that we've done that, if I go back to our surface control, you can see we have different options at each different click. And so now that we've done that, we can rename this and we can call it filter type. So, now that we've done that, let's add some cool stuff simply because we can. And we'll use it to help create our interface here for our surface control. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this kind of out of the way here. And I'm going to drag this output to the top just so I have some space to work. I will leave this ran to our output. However, I'm also going to run it to a frequency splitter. And I can use this frequency splitter to take certain areas of frequencies and send them out to effects. If you don't have this and you're running on an older version of FL Studio, then you can instead just run your signal into an EQ and cut out just the space you want for your effects. So now that we've done that, I want to create a few effects. And almost all of these effects, I'm going to want to leave the low, low end out of. So therefore, I'll change this to two bands, getting rid of our high band. And honestly, I'll leave this cut off about where it's at, because I'm going to do some stereo effects, and I don't want to introduce stereo effects to the low end. You might want to, depending on what you're doing, but I'm not going to here. Now, I just want this output here. In order to do that, I'm going to have to assign a number. This would generally get sent to a target mixer track. Now, instead of a target mixer track in here, this will relate to one of these sends down here. So send one, we set this to send one. Now, I don't want to accidentally grab the entire track. So this main output here, I can right click it and we have options. I can either insert a plugin off of that output or I can deactivate it. Same for inputs. If you right click, you can deactivate an input. You can also choose where you want an input coming from, from this list. So if you don't want to dig through all of these, you can see we have a SimSynth main output. You can name the other SimSynth something different, keep it organized, and click from this drop down. We can also insert a plugin prior to this connection by going insert plugin. So now that we've gone over that, this right here is our send one. This is what we want. We will create three new different plugins. I want a control for a chorus, a control for a delay, and a control for a reverb. And I suppose now why you could see, I want to leave the low end out of it. I will run the frequency splitter to every single one of these. 
However, I won't quite yet run them to the output because I want to hear them and assign them and affect them one at a time. Now, we're going to do something interesting and cool with the reverb, but the rest of these will be more of an on-off kind of deal. In order to create this on-off type of effect, we have something to add after called a fruity balance. Fruity balance is basically just a volume knob that we can assign to each and every effect to either add some of that effect or not. I can even insert it here by going insert, fruity balance, and it'll already be hooked up. I will do these one at a time by connecting them one at a time. And we want to set all of these effects to only the wet signal. Really quick, something that I messed up on with the splitter that I just noticed because my fruity chorus wasn't working is when I switched to two bands, it actually cut out the center band and left the top one. So this one over here needs to be assigned rather than the center one. Anyways, back to our regularly scheduled stuff. We want to be completely wet. And this will help add some width. Something that I'm noticing with the fruity chorus is I didn't leave enough high end. Our frequency splitter is cutting it off, and I don't want to add too much bass below it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a second output off of our SimSynth and run it to another EQ. So make sure that's routed there. And I'm going to run that EQ into our chorus for processing. And so I'll create a high and low pass. So I'll kind of sneak this up here, sneak this down here. That way we've got a direct visual line to our fruity course. I can sneak this back. And now even though we don't see it, we can hear the difference if I have this off. If I turn it up, You've got a good set of speakers, you should be able to hear that. Especially if we go higher up. You hear that come in? So we can name that effect mid-width or something like that. I will turn that off and let's hook up our delay. So now that we have this delay open, we're going to want to make sure to take away any dry signal. We'll tempo sync and we'll set this to something we want. We'll change our level here. Change it to stereo, because why not? I like that. We'll change the tone. I want to add a little bit of a cutoff, bring it down some, to give it more of that tape feel where you start losing information. I want to turn the resonant up a little bit, because I can. And I really like that. Now, the reason I loaded up a delay is because feedback knobs are pretty sensitive. If I want to link something to the feedback and I don't want this feedback to go too high, then we need to talk about that. So we'll have two knobs here, one for our feedback and one for our actual amount of wet signal. And then before we change this, let's add some saturation.
And so changing the symmetry here, we're going to get more even harmonics, which is going to mean it's going to sound more musically in tune. So we'll keep that. We'll add a little bit of a knee just to make sure it's soft saturation instead of distortion. I think I actually like the harder distortion, so I'll keep that down. Decisions, decisions. And now that I've done that, I'll just turn the fruity balance volume down and we will hook up our reverb. We'll turn down our dry. We'll cut off any extra low end. And you know what? I think I want any delay we might have going through this reverb as well. So let's turn this up. I love it. We'll go tempo sync and add a slight pre delay. We'll bring our high damping down so this is a little bit darker. about 1.3 kilohertz. We'll move our crossover up to about 1.3. I'll, I'll even go closer to 1.5. And so what this is gonna do is hook to our base multiplier and we will create a knob for our base multiplier. And this knob will actually increase or decrease anything below this crossover, which can help make for a darker, fuller sound. So if we listen to it, We'll play it with a delay full and then without. As you'll see when it's turned up, it just feels a little bit fuller and girthier. And so we can add a knob for that. We'll call it our fat knob. Because why? Because why not? So now that we've done those, I will set up these knobs. And when I set up the feedback for the delay, we'll talk about that. I'll be right back. So I've got just about all these knobs hooked up. The only one I don't have hooked up is our feedback knob. Now, in order to limit our feedback from going too high, there is actually no options in our surface control here. So I will actually have to run our control information through something that's going to limit this for us. In order to do that, prior to this, I will add another peak controller. Now, for this peak controller, I'm going to come here. I'm going to copy value for my delay there. I'm going to come in and I'm going to paste the value here. Now that I've done that, this is the maximum threshold that we are going to get as long as I turn our volume to the opposite direction. So now I need to output a single tone and control the volume of that tone into here in order to either turn our feedback up or down. And the way we'll do that is we'll add a plugin. We'll add SliceX. And this is going to start showing you how creative you can get in this plugin. So I'll disconnect it from the audio output. Afterwards, I'll add a fruity balance. And what I can do here is there should be an option, tools, where I can run a script. And I am going to do a tone generation. I just generated a sine wave at 500 hertz. Now if I click loop and let that play, it will continue to play and output noise into our fruity balance. I can turn this down and I can now input that volume into my peak controller. And if I go check my peak controller, I want to set this maximum and I want to set that here so that the maximum just touches nothing. And now everything in between should set me somewhere else in this spectrum between the base and everything else, which our base again is at 21%. So now we can take our peak information output controls, peak, 
and we can run our peak information into the feedback effect for our delay. And now we can open this, we can activate our volume knob, and we can take our feedback option and connect it to our volume knob. With the decay reset, open the delay, you can see that we now can affect our feedback level. Now, if you'll notice, as I turn the feedback up, it actually turns down here. So I can rename this feedback off or something like that. We'll go feedback removal. Okay, so now we can add bevels. Let's go default to help organize this stuff. And in these bevels, we can also add words. And change sizes. We can also change the colors of the bevels. I'll add one of those for the delay and one of those for our chorus and filter. And then after all of that, just because we can, we'll add an output volume control using a fruity soft clipper, which will allow us to saturate as well. So everything that's connected to our output, I'll bring into here, move that to the out, and then we'll activate both these knobs. One will be a slider for output. And then we're going to add a knob for saturation. To make it fit, we'll go a smaller size. We will rename, and we will call this saturation. Okay, we will add. Another bevel, default, we'll select everything, move it all down in its orientation. I'll move this here, order, send it back, okay. Make it extra big, select it all again, bring it down because I want to give it a cool title. Cool. Come in here and hook up our final two. We'll hook up our output to our post gain and our saturation to our threshold. Now that we have this, we will save preset as that base. You can see my test pluck base I ran through before just to get a grip of the video. And now we have a pretty cool base or a pretty cool high pluck. All right, cool stuff. Now, as you can see, Patcher is an extremely powerful plugin. And if you're into this kind of stuff, it's extremely fun to play with and use. It does take some time and is a tad bit overwhelming, but it's great for not only sound design, but for using in your effects chains. As you can see, we can load in any effect. So if you start running out of space in your mixer rack, you can actually load in more effects into your you know, mixer and your mixer track by opening a patcher and then just loading in the effects that way. And although you may not be into actually doing all the designing, you can always download presets. I will add a link for an image line forum below where a lot of people share presets at. There's actually some really cool stuff out there. You don't have to go paying for a bunch of plugins that you feel like you don't have. You might find them there. So that just about covers it. That was a lot. I hope this video was helpful. If you like this video, please like this video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio. Adios.